This is the kind of thing that gets everybody mad. It's kind of funny because it's not just one fan base in particular I'd be pissing off, because I'd be pissing off so many fan bases by making this kind of video. Let's go over what Scott Wheeler posted onto The Athletic the other day that really got a lot of the hockey community talking about prospects, potential, and the NHL draft in total. We're going over the 2018 draft here today because Scott Wheeler posted what was a redo of the draft onto The Athletic. Because it's paid for material, we're not going to go ahead and screenshot it. I'll just tell you some of the information and the ideas that are brought upon this piece. But Scott Wheeler did indeed go out there and post what was his top three on his Twitter account. He says that his 2018 NHL redraft goes as follows. The first overall pick, the Buffalo Sabres select Quinn Hughes. With the second overall pick, the Carolina Hurricanes select from the Barry Colts, Andre Svechnikov. And with the third overall pick, the Montreal Canadiens select from Pori of the Finnish League, yes, Sperry, nope, not him. We're going with Rasmus Dahlin instead. So let's go over some of the picks here that had been discussed. We're just going to go over three of them. Not the one, two, three, but the one, three, ten, actually, because these are the ones that I think are the most interesting out of the bunch. But before we get into any of that, I will say this. Because this is Scott Wheeler specifically, who is a draft guy, making a redraft for The Athletic, this is not based off of what they have done today. This is off the perspective that you're going into a time machine and telling the guys in 2018, okay, with the first overall pick, the player who was going to project to having the best long-term future is X. And that's why you're going to take him at this spot. Buffalo, you're going to take Quinn Hughes first overall. This is from the perspective of long-term development, not just based off of what they've done. So that's kind of how Scott Wheeler likes to formulate things. And of course, because he's a guy, one individual guy who's writing the article, this is his own subjective opinion. So we're going to go over that and just talk about these ideas here in this video. So the picks we're talking about are 1, 3, and 10. First overall, it's Quinn Hughes going to the Buffalo Sabres. His original team is the Vancouver Canucks at 7th overall. Second, we're going over the third overall pick the Montreal Canadiens are selecting Rasmus Dahlin. In real life, he went first overall, and the Montreal Canadiens would actually be passing up on Jesperi Kotkaniemi if they took Dahlin at three instead. That leaves us with the 10th overall pick, where Jesperi Kotkaniemi, who in real life went third, is dropping to 10th overall to the Edmonton Oilers. In real life, the Oilers selected Evan Bouchard, and that's kind of where we're going with this conversation. So, first overall, Quinn Hughes. Would I say that he is the best prospect in the NHL entry draft in terms of potential? If you did a redraft, would you say he would be first overall? Honestly, I'd say no. I still think Darlene should be first, mostly because, like, I get it. Quinn Hughes is out here as the most productive player in terms of points out of the 2018 NHL entry draft, at least amongst the top guys. Sure, Kachuk and Svechnikov and Darlene all have more points, but Quinn Hughes is coming up fast, and he has fewer games played than all of them, so he's kind of in that territory where he should break through soon. But Quinn Hughes was always supposed to be that, you know? At his best, he was supposed to be a nimble, quick, puck-moving, offensively capable defenseman who had some really good skating and edges, who could keep up defensively, but who you wouldn't draft because of his defensive ability. Rasmus Dahlin was supposed to be a combination of that, plus stability, size, and a lot more defensive capability than Quinn. And because of that, I think it is somewhat unfair to judge Rasmus Dahlin based off of what he's done so far in the NHL because he had two 40-plus point years. The first one was in 82 games, the second one was in 59 games, and he had just been getting better during that two-year span. However, this season, he really took a back seat when you had yourselves Kruger as your coach. He really didn't allow Dahlin to play his game the proper way. We made that video talking about how the Sabres have broken Rasmus Dahlin. Ever since Granado took over as the coach, though, Dahlin started to really put it together, and you saw a lot more of what made him a special player 
bringing itself out towards the end of the year. So I still do believe that at 20, 21 years old, Rasmus Dahlin's best is absolutely yet to come. And by the time this guy's 25, 26, 27, I really wouldn't be surprised if he develops into a true number one that goes out there and logs 25 minutes a night and maybe wins a Norris or two. So for Montreal, I mean... It's kind of nice to have a guy like that, right? Especially playing on the left side because you have Weber and... Excuse me, no, you don't have Weber anymore. My bad. You have Petrie and Romanov, I guess, playing on the right side too. Having a number one defenseman of Rasmus Dahlin taken at third overall would have been fantastic. However, you would not have gotten Kotkaniemi instead. Either way, let's go back to Quinn Hughes and Buffalo. I wanted to expand upon that first before we go over to the other topics here. If Quinn Hughes was playing with the Buffalo Sabres, I honestly don't know if they would have gotten the same results out of what Quinn Hughes with Vancouver has been able to produce. Mostly because if the Sabres took him first overall, would they have gone the Dahlin route? Would they have played him in the NHL right away? Or would they have gone the Owen Power route and say, okay, you want to go play in Michigan again? Okay, go ahead, do that, dominate that team, be the best version of yourself before you come over here to Buffalo. And all of a sudden, the entire timeline changes because you don't have that number one defenseman taken out of the draft playing with your team in 2018, 19, and 20, and maybe even 2021, the entire timeline there gets shifted around too. But I will say right here, if you get Quinn Hughes and the way that he has been performing with Vancouver in Buffalo, you just cut and paste everything is exactly the same. I do kind of question how the Sabres would treat that kind of player, because with Rasmus Dahlin, you saw the entire kind of like demeaning of his profile and what it is that he does on the ice. They were trying to change the way he played the game. And if Quinn Hughes went over there... Would they do the same thing to him too? Would they try to make him focus on defense? Would they try to make him go out there and play a style that is a lot more just send the puck up to the neutral zone and all that? Don't allow him to carry it himself? Don't allow him to move it in the offensive zone with pizzazz down low behind the goal line? That would be really interesting and it would honestly be pretty bad for his overall development. Not that Vancouver is like the best team in the world when it comes to developing prospects, but Travis Green gave Quinn Hughes a lot of leeway when they started out because Green was like, okay, yeah, he's good. Like, he is good enough to do this. He had him on the second power play to start off his career as well. Alex Edler was on the power play to start off that time, and then a few games in, it was like, okay, Quinn, you're on the first power play, let's try it, and then it stuck because he's still there today. Either way, though, with Quinn Hughes and Buffalo, it's a completely different situation. I don't know if it would really work out in the same way. I also am a big believer in Darlene in general as well, which is kind of why I would just take him first overall still. Having a Darlene in Montreal, though, would be really nice. That would be a really good stable defenseman to add to that core. And I think that all the coaches that Montreal has had would really allow Darlene to play the game that he wants to play. As for the final one, though, Jesperi Kotkaniemi to Edmonton at 10, as proposed here by Scott Wheeler. I am a fan of KK. I do think he's good. Admittedly, not as good as we would have wanted him to be, but he is still only 21 years old, so he still has a lot of room. It's just third overall. I mean, it was a pick back when it was made that I was kind of questioning. Today, you would have a tough time convincing me that that pick was the right pick at this time, but... You know, anything can change, right? Kotkaniemi, to me, was supposed to be falling under that Barkov kind of mold, you know? And Barkov is arguably a franchise talent for the Florida Panthers, so for Kotkaniemi, if he can be that, then it would really make that third overall selection worth it. It's just so far, he hasn't been the most consistent. His goal scoring, while it is great, his shooting ability is fantastic. He doesn't show it off as consistently as you would want him to, and I guess that does come with age, etc. But at the end of the day, you know, Jesperi Kotkaniemi wasn't really supposed to be a top pick anyway, as he was ranked to go in the 13, 16-ish range by some of these scouting outlets over here. TSN about McKenzie had him at five, though, because they realized that the lack of center talent at the top of the draft was a really big push for these center guys to go higher. But 10 to Edmonton, honestly, I could kind of see him going a little higher than that. I mean, some of the other guys that were ranked above Kotkaniemi in this redraft over here, you got guys like Adam Boquist and Noah Dobson. I personally might choose Boquist over Kotkaniemi, but not sure about Dobson. But hey, if the Edmonton Oilers are able to get themselves Jesperi Kotkaniemi, play him with Paul Uyarvi of all people, have yourselves a pretty good center core of McDavid, Dreisaitl, Nugent Hopkins, Kotkaniemi, maybe play Nugent Hopkins on the wing, have KK as the third line guy or whatever. That would be a monstrosity, assuming all of these guys hit their ceilings. Well, I mean, you could say McDavid and Dreisaitl are very near their ceilings right now. Maybe they haven't even touched it yet, I don't know. But Kotkaniemi certainly has a lot more room to grow, so it's a lot more difficult to project how he has been in comparison 
with the future and the redraft scenario as well. So if you're a Canadians fan, a Sabres fan, or a Canucks fan, talk to me in the comments. What do you think? about this redraft over here. Quinn Hughes number one, Dolly number three, Kotkaniemi dropping from third over to tenth overall. I know, I probably pissed off a whole bunch of people by making this video. I'm sorry, Montreal fans. I love Kotkaniemi. I really do. You watch me during the streams. I love it whenever this guy was able to do his thing. It's just projection, talent, you know? The draft isn't so much about who you take, it's who you leave off the board when you do make your picks. Talk to me in the comments, though. What do you think about this redraft? I hope you enjoyed this. This is Ash Rolls and I9. And... Bye.